Welcome back. This is David Papa, and this is the Personal Injury Guru Show. And today I have a special guest, and his name is Mike Peasley. And the reason I have Mike here today, and um, thank you for coming, Mike. And I'm going to tell you the reason he's here is because he was a 20-year veteran of the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department. And also, he is a private investigator working on insurance claims for people who claim they're injured. So the reason is pretty obvious why I wanted him here. I want him to talk to you and explain to you his role as an officer going to accident sites so you have a better understanding of what the police do at accident sites. But at the same time, we're going to talk to him about private investigation. I've had clients that are injured, but they've got to be cautious because once they go on record in their deposition and making sworn statements of how they're injured and what they can and can't do, you don't want to say, I can't go skiing or I can't go outside running. You don't want to say those things if they're not true because people like Mike are going to take videos of you, photographs of you, give them to the insurance company who've hired them, and the next thing you know, not only is your case blown and your credibility shot, but what's going to happen is it's fraud on the court and you can get in trouble for that. So we're going to avoid certain things. We're going to talk about social media and the do's and don'ts when you have a claim. People don't realize when you go to social media and you're injured and you're claiming you can't lift more than 20 pounds and you're standing there holding your girlfriend over her head and she's drinking beers at a party, those are the things that are damaging to your case. So we're going to learn all about that next on The Personal Injury Guru Show. This is the Personal Injury Guru Show with attorney David Papa. Welcome back to the Personal Injury Guru Show. My name is David Papa and I'm here and I'd like to introduce you, Mike Peasley. How are you doing today, David? I'm doing good, Mike. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Great. If you don't mind, uh, starting out, there's kind of a, a, there's two different issues we'd like to talk about today. One is you being an officer and investigating accidents. The second will be getting more into investigative work with taking video pictures and talking about social media for people who have been injured, okay? Sounds good. All right, so I know that being in the sheriff's office for 20 years, that's that's all criminal, but there's also another side to it as you go to investigate accidents. Can you kind of describe that? Sure. Um, what's funny is, is when I got on, on, on top of the other units as a detective in certain divisions, I was part of the um, accident uh, investigation team. Um, and also part of the traffic unit. Going to an accident, um, people don't, they get all excited at an accident. And what they have to realize is it was an accident. So there's several types of accidents. Right. And those accidents, one, a driver exchange form, there's really no injury. Right. Uh, you're looking to make sure everybody's got their documents, your driver's license, registration, insurance card, and you're running that to make sure that that driver exchange form for the attorneys is viable because obviously insurance companies are getting involved. Then you have the injury where you're coming up on an accident. It's important and people don't understand. Today we live in a society where everybody's got cell phones. They should be taking pictures right, right then and there so that there's no dispute of where the cars are located, about injuries, if EMS is being responded, uh, the police are en route. Uh, so. As a police officer, going up to those type of accidents, um, depending on where it happens in traffic flow, sometimes we're able to mark the wheels of where the accidents, um, where the vehicles are placed and get the vehicles moved so we have an idea that what we need to investigate at that. If it's a serious thing where there's a death involved at an accident or there's serious injuries, obviously we're gonna be blocking that road off. Right. And we're going to be calling a major accident investigation team out. Um, a lot of people don't understand. The sheriff's office works when they work city contracts, they'll work the accident. Most accidents, people are, are under the assumption that the first person there is working the accident. Well, the municipality, say Clearwater, Largo, St. Pete, if it's their jurisdiction, they're the ones that are actually going to work the accident. Okay. So, and then you have FHP. So a lot of times you're pulling up to an accident, everybody wants you to work the accident, but if it's on a incorporated area, 
we actually are standing by until FHP arrives. Really? I see. I didn't know that. Yes. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. So, you know, it's important first and foremost that the, the, the series of injuries, are there injuries? And that's my first priority every time I get to an accident. And if every person's claiming that there's no injuries, it should be documented by the officer that everybody said they were fine and they refused EMS, they refused the fire department and et cetera. Okay. Um, and then what that does is, is help down the road when somebody all of a sudden is claiming that they have serious injuries. Well, it doesn't mean that you're not gonna get an injury. You can get bumped at 10 miles an hour and have no feelings of any injury at that mm -hmm. point. And obviously you as a personal injury attorney knows that a vertebrae can go out, something can happen, and yeah, so that driver exchange form now becomes a full-blown investigation. Right, okay, great. And let me ask you something, um, and this is only because I've seen this so many times in my profession, where people have been drinking, driving, or on medications at the scene of an accident. How do you smell that out? Is it obvious, or is it sometimes you kind of have to, to figure it out with some investigation? Well, it's sort of funny, and it, it's happened more than one time in your career. A lot of people that are DUI and they cause an accident, it's sort of funny, they're so relaxed, and people that are on medication, they're not injured. And so the injuries to the other party, you're, you're focusing on that over there. Right. And obviously if it's serious bodily injury, and you're gonna ask the person to take a breath test, or you're gonna ask them to take a blood test, and if they refuse to do that, you can actually get the blood test from them right then and there if there's any suspicion of possible alcohol or narcotics due to that. So a lot of people don't understand, you know, when a police officer says, well, we're gonna take a blood test, they go, you can't do that. Well, yeah, you can if there's serious bodily injury. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can to determine a BAC on somebody. Right, yeah, because I know there's been many times that I've, uh, you know, I've seen accidents where they're, they're just horrific and at the scene of the accident, um, they said, yeah, I, I don't know how the person could have hit me, but I saw them doing tests in the middle of the road, I guess. There's certain DUI tests that you perform and for, Correct. for people. Can you explain those and, and how they work? Yeah, the field sobriety tests are real easy. Normally, if an officer detects either the uh, odor of alcohol on somebody's breath or slurred speech or wobbliness, uh, they'll conduct a field sobriety test. The field sobriety test has a number of factors to it. There's an actual chart that you're doing a field sobriety test with. Mm -hmm. uh, one is HGN. It's a horizontal gaze stigma test with the eyes. You're checking to see if there's any movement in the eye. Uh, the next one is the alphabet, um, the <laughs> heel to toe, right. uh, finger to nose, and an officer can determine at that point, do you think you have enough PC to take him in on a DUI? Right. Okay. Very good. And as far as um, as being an officer, um, you know, have you ever um, had to do depositions, or did you ever have to get called into uh, attorneys' offices to speak to them at all about these types of things? Absolutely. Especially as um, um, uh, you know, a deputy, uh, we had depositions all the time, and on DUI cases, we were always being deposed or having to go to court on a DUI. As a private investigator. It's right. sort of funny. People go, well, um, did you go out to the scene right then and there? Most of the time, private investigators don't get any call from the personal injury attorneys until a month after the fact. Sure. And sometimes it's even longer. So you're dealing with those factors, which is extremely hard. Right. Because, one, you have to, say an accident happens at an intersection. There's cameras and there's businesses. It could be vital to get any information from those businesses off those cameras. Well, anybody that knows about intersections, those cameras sometimes are taken away after 10 days. Right. It used to be a 30-day delay. So, you know, a lot of times you can pick up and find out, hey, listen, I, was, I got this report from the attorney and it's only been eight days. Uh, I see you have cameras here. Is there any way I can look at those? And we've had a ton of success getting an early case where the other party was, in, you know, they were the person that's caused the accident. So mm -hmm. it was beneficial to us. And folks, that's, that's important to understand. It's, it's, this is another piece to the puzzle when you get into an automobile accident. Many times in, in 20 years, 
I've seen my client say, I promise you this is the truth, this is how it happened, but there's no proof. The other person says, no, the, the exact opposite. She ran the red light, no, he ran the red light. And, and Mike is saying exactly what we need. You need to have someone that can go out there immediately and review all of these you know, potential witnesses or the cameras that have it on video. Because if you don't, you end up having a problem with your case if we can't prove who really caused the accident. And that's something that's very important. It is really important. And the other side of that is, is if it's late at night and there's and the two cars that are involved in an accident, one saying it was his fault, the other one saying it's their fault. Well, again, it goes back to cameras. It goes back to everybody has a cell phone. Right. Take videos if you're not injured. Take videos of stuff. It may cause the other party to get upset that you're videotaping, but you want to make sure that the damage on both vehicles can be the exact of what you're trying to say compared to the other person. Right. And, and Florida is a comparative fault state, which means this. If you get into an accident and, you, and you're both driving down the same road and one's in the right lane and somebody else in the left and you collide, there can also be 50-50 liability. Both of you might be held responsible unless there's a camera. If a camera picks up the fact that somebody actually jumped into the other lane, it changes everything. And that's Absolutely. How, that's going to be one of the keys to, to those types of successes for people. It's funny that you said that because uh, I just worked, um, uh, I got a report of an accident where the one party said that he had a green light to turn northbound on a road over in Tampa, and the other one said, no, I had a green light to go westbound. Well, what was funny was I went out there and examined the lights. The, the turn arrow to go north lasted four seconds. Well, it immediately went from a four second turn in northbound to green. So which party's lying you have the westbound saying he had a green light well we examined both lights yep. and the reality was there was green lights going both way right but who's responsible at that point i told the attorney that northbound turn guy had the responsibility to wait for that westbound to go regardless if he had a green light or not because that was a turn lane right so right. see that's interesting yeah because i've seen that happen a couple times and and for me um you know, somebody comes to me with these types of incidents, I don't just sit on them, I have to be proactive. And I've got to get Mike involved because Mike is the type of guy that's going to go out there and figure this out. Uh, can I do it? No, I'm not qualified to do what you do. And um, certainly I don't have that time, I do different things, but as that is your field of expertise, that's awesome. It really helps people a great deal. Absolutely, absolutely. The other thing I was going to talk to you about is, is when you first started the show was, people being stupid once they claim an injury. Yeah. Unbel yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I've been involved in I don't know how many cases where somebody's claiming full disability, uh, going into mediation in a wheelchair, um, just really dumb things. Yep. Well, then the other side, because it's a trucking company or it's a, a, you know, a big firm where it's going to be millions of dollars that this guy is going to get, uh, I was blessed enough to work a case where it was a two-year-old case, and the guy kept going to mediation after mediation and going in and out in a wheelchair. Well, they hired me. So we went out and we started looking at this guy. Well, they had already hired several investigators. Well, they were getting out there too late in the morning. We went out 3 o'clock in the morning and sat on the house to have this gentleman open up the garage, the guy that's been going to court in a wheelchair, carrying five gallon buckets of paint in both hands and lifting them up and putting it in the bed of his truck. And then he was taking four by fours and putting it in there. And we followed him over to Tampa and he was up and down a ladder and we had 148 photographs of him lifting gallons of paint at each section of this building he was going up. Wow. So, you know, that his case sort of went bye bye. Social sure. media absolutely the oh. worst okay before we get to social media let me just add something about what you just said here's the problem folks if you're going to claim you have an injury that's perfectly fine but when you have your deposition taken and you're sworn to tell the truth it's the same thing as sitting in a court of law and swearing to tell the truth and what happens is you have to be honest and if you exaggerate your injuries or flat out you're not honest about your injuries guys like mike are going to expose you and it does. It's not just a. It, uh, remember, it's not just about your case. You might have some serious injuries, but you've made them out to be what they're really not. Now you're not going to get compensated for those injuries. You're not going to get compensated for anything. You've lost credibility, 
and it's damaging to your reputation. And on top of it, the court might take action against you through one of the attorneys for fraud on the court. And guys like Mike are going to go out there and they're going to investigate it. Does that mean he's not doing the right things or he shouldn't be doing it? Absolutely not. He's one of the people policing that industry to make sure people are being honest. And I always tell my clients, just be honest That's in it. a deposition. Don't ever lie. When you lie, it comes back and it bites you right in the ass. You don't want to be that guy or girl. You want to be honest up front and you want to be sincere with people. That's the only way to be. And that way, Mike goes out there and he takes photos of you and you said, yeah, I can jog. It just hurts after a while. Well, if he catches you jogging, you've already said, I can jog. It's okay. But if you say, I can't jog anymore. I'm not able to move my legs like that. And he catches you jogging, you're cooked. Absolutely. It's funny that you said that about the jogging. We, we had a, a case where a person actually said during mediation that they could do certain physical things, mm -hmm. and that was good. But then when we went out and we were doing an investigation, they said they were limited to light weights, and that was it. Well, we got the person climbing in a tree, cutting trees down. Um, we got them actually lifting stuff up. Right. Um, and, you know, again, you just hit it on the head. Be honest. That's it. And, and, if you're, and, and that's really the key. I'm trying to educate people and letting them know. And even if you don't mean to exaggerate or if you don't mean what you're saying as, as, as being dishonest, you have to be very cautious in, in particular of how you're prepped for your deposition. Depositions are very serious. It's when the other side gets an opportunity to talk to you about all your injuries and what it's done to you and how it's changed your life. My job is to sit there ahead of time and talk throughout all those issues with you so there's no surprises and you don't say the wrong things. Because I know in the back of my mind, Mike's going to be out there yeah. and he's going to be watching. And if you don't really take your case serious like that and you don't realize it, it can really be devastating for your case and we don't want to see that. Absolutely. You know, and I know you don't want to find things that people are doing wrong. You don't want to find dishonest people. That's not what your goal is. Your goal is is, is just the goal is to, the goal is to take and make sure that each party is being honest. Sure. During the accidents, I mean, uh, you know, it goes back to insurance. It goes back to how come our insurance claims are so high? Well, they're high if there's actually injury. You know, there's they go high because of certain things. But yeah. the ones that are collecting some of this insurance money. Yep. aren't even injured right so yeah. the bottom line is is yeah i'm not going out there to just to say okay well you're a liar right but right. stay off of social media let's talk about social media Mike. <laughs> we have to talk about social media folks because uh, i'm just going to mention a brief story when i was in trial once in orlando um our client said she was just simply too injured she could not make it to the courthouse because of her injuries and this it was a bad accident um, the night before we go to our closing arguments, uh, lo and behold, there's photos of her now being released on her own Facebook of her at a nightclub in Orlando dancing with very, very limited clothes on. That's the perfect example of what never to do. Absolutely. A, you're not being honest with me as your attorney, and, and on top of it, uh, the jury, even though they're sequestered, they're not supposed to look on, on social media, they're not supposed to look, they do. I think everyone has a natural thing, you know, people. Absolutely. They, they wanna look, they wanna see, they wanna Google people's names, they wanna Google and see what they can find. And the thing is, is that it, it was devastating to her case. And unfortunately, uh, I, think, I think it ultimately hurts people. Absolutely. You Social know? media will kill you. We've had a DUI case. Um, it wasn't the first DUI case where um, guys looking at his third DUI case. You know, what does he do? Posts on social media the night before, all of his buddy and them out drinking, and he's he's ordered not to drink. Well, you just got killed from social media. Yeah. So, yeah, social media, stay off of it. Boy, and, you know, and we grew up in a different, you know, Absolutely. era, you and I. And there was no Google. There was no Internet. Uh, the, the, there was nothing. There was no social media, really. I mean, hell, there was only like four or five TV stations, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But today, folks, uh, Mike hit on the nose earlier. Everyone has a cell phone. And everyone takes photos and puts them you know, online somewhere or on one of their social medias. Everybody always wants to take selfies. Everyone wants to take every every time they do anything of note, they put it online. You can find anything about anybody now, can't you? You can find anything you want to find. Yeah. And do you, is that what you also do? Do you check out people's? We'll check out social media yeah. on you. Uh, absolutely. And most people are funny because they want friends. 
So all of a sudden you join in as a friend and then you don't know who you're joining in with and it could be a private investigator that you're talking to. Hear that folks? That's something to consider. Yeah, that's that's pretty big. I know a number of uh, private investigators that they basically, that's what they do is they run social media and they get logged into these places. They work for some big companies and next thing you know, hey, send me a picture of a party you're at tonight. Send me this. and. They don't know who they're talking to. Well, you may be talking to an investigator, so be careful. See that, and that's something to consider because of course, folks, when you're out there on your social media and it's a whole new generation and I never got involved with it, I still really don't uh, get too involved with the, the Facebook and that sort of thing. It's, it's not my style. Uh, with my business, we get involved with Google and we get involved with, with Facebook just for advertisement purposes. But I don't put my, my personal life out there to anybody ever. Exactly, exactly. And I don't think you do either. No, not at all. <laughs> just, I'm, not, I'm not on Facebook. I'll yeah. check Facebook, but I'm not on Facebook. <laughs> and, and it has a lot to do, again, with the, the, the issues we've been discussing today, is that you have to stay away from at least social media while you're injured. Because you might be injured. You might say, yeah, my neck's killing me. I have a bad neck, my back hurts. But a picture says a thousand words. And if you're sitting there saying in a deposition, my back and my neck hurt, eight out of 10 pain, no matter what, if they see a photo with you on the horseback riding, drinking a beer with your friends, whatever it is, the perception is you're not telling the truth. Absolutely, and absolutely. I, and I've had to deal with that a lot. And it's very frustrating because even though it might kind of take things out of context a bit. Stay off of social media. Stop sending your photos on social media. Absolutely. Yep, yeah, I agree. So, it's so damaging, you know? Um, so as we're moving around, and, um, as far as where can they find you? Where can people find you if they want to hire you? They can find me. Uh, I'm, I'm in uh, Peasley and Peasley Investigations. Um, I'm on the uh, www.peasleyandpeasley dot com right, right. Uh, you can uh, contact me at 727-612-1828 I'd uh, love to hear from you um, my I, cards are out to most of the attorneys in the area so and I appreciate you uh, bringing me in today well Mike it's important to bring you in because this issue is an issue that I've been concerned about and I always tell my individual clients but for you to come out here it gives credibility to everyone watching that, this is what happens. Take it serious. Don't play with this social media because, and do it any other time, just not when you're injured. Absolutely. You know? One thing I'd like to bring up when, and to close my side sure. here is, is to say, you know, if you get a million, two million dollar claim, and you, you're sitting there and you're saying that, you know, I am this bad off, what happens is, is they can bring a private investigator in if they want to go look at you, you may have won a lawsuit, but you may not have won the battle too, because they're paying out a lot of money. And sometimes they hire these investigators, including myself, to go out and say, we didn't buy everything that he got paid out to. And now we're catching them out racing in, in Jeeps, bouncing all over the place, no. um, doing a lot of stuff. So be careful. I mean, injuries are big. I mean, if you're injured, you're injured, like you said, David. Yep. Yep. But don't lie. Don't lie. That's the key to this educating story is just be honest. Uh, tell the truth to the best you can and uh, stick with it. Stay away from social media if you're injured. And there could be investigators out there, like Mike said, not just out there videotaping where you're hanging out in your home area, but they could be online luring you to give them damaging information. One more thing about that. When you're videotaping someone, and I've always wondered this, people always ask, can you do it outside their house? Can you look into their house? What's the rules? The rules are you cannot film inside the house. Okay. A lot of people think they can, and I know there's been investigators that have walked up to windows and filmed inside. You cannot do that. Anything, once a garage door goes up, and you're sitting down the street, and you have the ability to shoot it from there, yep. it's not inside the house, it's still there. But once you go out in that yard, yep. you're all ours. Uh, we right. got you. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Too yeah. invasive inside the home. Absolutely. Yeah. So there it is. It's too invasive inside the home. But once you start getting out of that house, folks, be very, very cautious. 
Well, Mike, thank you very much. No, thank you, and I appreciate it. Absolutely. It was great having you on. I think you educated folks out there very well, and I appreciate it, and the show appreciates it. And, folks, thank you very much uh, for this segment of The Personal Injury Guru. Well, folks, I think we learned quite a bit on that last episode of The Personal Injury Guru. What we learned was there are investigators that are out there, they're watching you, the insurance company hires them to do just that. And there's nothing undermined about it. They're just out there making sure you're telling the truth. So the best way around it, according to Mike Peasley, be honest. It's really that simple. He also talked to me about social media, and you heard, social media in my opinion, and Mike's, is probably the one way you can really damage your case because perception is reality. And those photos that you're putting out are saying a lot of things about how happy you are, how much fun you're having. That doesn't add up to somebody who's hurt and injured. It's just not worth it to do. And I try to always sit and, and counsel my clients on these types of issues. And an attorney should be doing that for their client because it's very important. You don't want to damage your case over something like social media, and it's very, very important not to do so. So Mike taught us a lot today. Uh, we also appreciate the fact that he was a veteran uh, police officer for 20 years um, in the Sheriff's Department here in Pinellas County. That's outstanding. First responders should be saluted. And he comes here with a great deal of credibility, and I really appreciate what he did for all of you today. If you like this show and you found that it was educating, hit like, and I would appreciate that. Also, follow it. And you can leave comments if you like. I'll always respond to them. And also subscribe. Now, if you watched it on YouTube, that's great. But if you'd rather just listen to it, you can use any one of the podcast platforms, such as Apple, Google, Spotify, and vice versa. If you just already listen to them, jump over to YouTube and you can watch it on television. Well, podcasting. Anyways, I'm showing my age. Um, make sure you contact me if you have any questions at 727-500-LAWS, L-E-W-S, or you can just Google me at Papa Injury Law. You will find me, and it's dpapa at papainjurylaw.com if you want to email me. I respond the best I can. And folks, if you have any better opportunities to sit down and look at this show and say, I've got some good ideas for people or guests that might be able to educate everyone out there, just shoot it over to me and I'll look at it. Anyways, folks, don't forget to ring the bell. And we'll be back again with more episodes on The Personal Injury Guru.